Hey guys, welcome to the shop. You, if you watch any of my videos, you probably saw me on my last video about five seconds from starting this. Oh, this is a new video. Today, we're working on the Ford Focus. I'll let you know what. Uh. So this is my 2014 Ford Focus. I need to do brakes. That's what you're here for. I'm doing front and rear brakes. Uh, I love this thing. Makes great gas mileage. Uh, the AC or, uh, the AC compressor squeaks. I need a new one, uh, but the AC blows perfect. So I'm not going to sit there and rip out a perfectly good running compressor to swap out to a compressor that doesn't squeak. But then I have to rebleed the system or vacuum the system and put new uh, Freon in. But it is a salvage title, it was wrecked in the front. There is still some damage to the core support. It's got 77,000 miles. I bought it 7,000 miles ago. We run this thing like a dog. Uh, we love it though. It, it is a nice little get around vehicle. Issues, there still is transmission issues. Yes, the transmission video that I have out, it did fix everything temporarily. Uh, there's a comment in there that somebody left that I just need to pull the transmission and redo the motors and the clutches. And that is coming up. Not today. Today we are doing some stop or power stop brakes. I like power stop. That's what's on the Camaro. Uh, and they make really nice products. So we're going with their Evolution Plus pads, front and rear, like I said. I'll put the parts in the description below. And uh, we're going to get started on that. If you've never done brakes, they're quite simple, especially with uh, either single piston uh, that aren't the screw in, screw out type. It's a little bit easier than that, uh, and they're not drums, so that makes it even better. So uh, if you ever want to save a buck, 30 to 50 bucks for your pads and instead of 400 for somebody else to do it, a couple hand tools, and you knock it out. So let's. Uh, Let's lift this thing up, get into it, pull this wheel off, and we'll start on the driver's side, and then we'll jump in over on the passenger side. So, let's get to it. All right, first step is you're going to jack up your car. Second is you're going to put a jack stand up under it for safety. You don't want this thing falling. Uh, these lug nuts are three-quarter, so get you a three-quarter using some Olsa Tools impacts. Check them out in the link in the description. So, we're going to use my impact knock these off otherwise you should have this on the ground and loosen it while it's on the ground before you uh put it in the air if you're going to do it by hand and not use power tools so let's knock this off all right word of caution uh these are two-piece lug nuts if you can you'll see that little lip right there uh what that means is this is a little metal cover over the actual steel lug nut uh, just for aesthetics but what happens is you can turn these over and uh, if they strip on the bolt or the nut then you're basically screwed so invest in other ones all right so taking a look in here we have these little clips on the front of the front brakes we have new ones in the kit so what we're going to do is pop these off and that's going to help us get these pads off and it holds this uh, caliper on to the bracket for the caliper. We're not messing with the rotors. The rotors look great. They don't have any ripples or anything else. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to come to the back back here and we are going to pop this little cap off right here. And it looks like it's going to be um, an Allen head. So I'll find out what size Allen head and we'll knock uh, this caliper off and I'll show y'all what to do next. All right, we're going to pop this little doohickey off. There's not an easy way. Well, I guess we can do it this way too. Boom, popped off. All right, so all this does is holds this caliper in here 
in the front so it doesn't move, which is a good thing. All right, I'm using my, uh, my Ulsa Tools swivel head to get into these tight places. They have a kit, uh, metric and standard, for uh, hex heads and allens. Uh, so yeah, definitely look at that because working on this kind of stuff, it, they're not expensive either. They're actually quite cheap. So we're gonna knock this out and pop this caliper off. Okay, with some finesse, you're gonna have to pull this off because sometimes they still have pressure on them. So we're gonna pull this off. And this one has some good meat on the brakes. So I'm not actually going to um, change these, but I will show you how. So it has a little three prong in it. Uh, and pretty simple. What you'll do is you'll take a clamp and I'll show you on the rear because the rear really needs to be changed. It's almost metal to metal. Uh, and we're just going to push this caliper all the way in uh, to where it's flushed right here. Try not to mess anything up. What I like to use is I like to use old uh, brake pads because they fit right where you need them. And you put the clamp right in the middle and right to the back and just use a screw clamp and it works perfect. So I'm going to put these back in and then we're going to go to the back and check that out. Because that's the one that actually needs it. So. All right, so we got the back tightened down. Now it's time to install these. I like to do one at a time, and a lot of times they get to be a pain in the butt anyway. But they go, shove them in, in a certain direction. And they got a lot of pressure on them. All right. Front brakes are done. They're in. Time to go to the back. All right, at the back wheel now. Uh, I'm rolling it over trying to hear any weird noise. It almost sounds like the bearing's kind of going bad back here. So that'll be another video of me replacing uh, bearings. So I'm gonna pop this wheel off. All right, so these brake calipers are a little bit different. They have two things going on with them. They are a hydraulic and a manual uh, spring-based handbrake. So you have your regular brakes, which work off the foot pedal, and then this is your uh, e-brake slash uh, parking brake. So uh, it will push pressure on it as well. Uh, and it uses a cable versus the hydraulics so that the hydraulics, if they failed or anything else, they won't let the car go. It stays manual manually locked. Uh, back here, there's a little surface rust, but nothing too bad. The rotor looks good. Same thing as the front. It has this little bracket on here holding the back on, or the front on. We're going to pop it off first, and then pop these backs off back here, which should be the same uh, size as the front, which I never told you all the size. Oh, there's my wrench. All right. Uh, this is an HW7. Uh, I guess that's a 7 millimeter. I don't know. So, yeah, we're just gonna pop this all off and knock it out, and I'll uh, we'll put the rear brakes on. All right, so we're gonna pop this off now. The more difficult part is the fact of it does have this uh, manual hydraulic or uh, manual e-brake, uh, and. Pushing these studs back kind of sucks. All right. All right, let's look at these pads. Once I get this thing removed. All right, here's the difference. The one up front was a hydro or was just a press in. This is a twist. Okay, well. Uh, looking at these brakes, I had to go to AutoZone and get a loan of tool. You can get these also on Amazon and whatnot for uh, like 18 to 20 bucks. Uh, so I borrowed it. Uh, I need to buy one, I guess. 
but uh, this is what's going to make this caliper, this caliper uh, go in because you have to twist it and you have to push in. So this little device right here makes that happen. So uh, you got these two little die, uh, holes right there and then all these other ones have these little holes too. So you just got to find the right one that matches and we will find it. So once we find it, we'll make it work. So it might even be this one. Yep. All right. So where I got it? It's just the main one. So what we do is we slip this piece over this, like so. Slip this in here, and then we hold this with uh, an adjustable um, wrench or that size, whatever size that is, and then we turn this and as we turn this it will turn and press down the uh, caliper. So that's what we're going to do now. Alright, now that that uh, um, caliper is down now let's go over here and check out our pads and everything else that we got for it and the uh, I got pads and we got the clips so we're gonna put these pads on first these are the back pads closest to the car and then the ones without the little spring are the ones furthest away so these are the outside these are the inside so we're gonna get these and one of these new clips, uh, the reason why you would use a new clip just in case the other one comes, becomes brittle and decides it wants to fall apart or not hold the caliper right. So let's do that. Uh, most of the time you'll also have some grease uh, to put on the friction points, uh, which is the sides here for where they move back and forth, not the front of the pads, just the sides. So we're going to slap these on and get them back in uh Back in the car, and then I've got three more to do, so we'll talk about this in just a moment. Uh, we're going to knock this out. A little bit of caveman technique, just hit it with whatever you got, but that one's done now I need to hop over and do the other rear one the other front one looks good too so I'm just doing the rears right now but like I showed you in the beginning of the video the fronts are kind of the same a uh, little bit different but kind of the same but this will save you probably about three hundred four hundred dollars just doing it yourself and it's not that difficult the only thing I had to go out of my way to get was this little tool uh, for it and I'll put a link to one in the description below because I need to buy one as well it's worth it for 20 bucks to have this with your car uh, especially if you ever work on them or don't and you just want to do what you need to do to save some money so yeah I'm gonna get to these other ones and then set the car down Man, look at the difference between these though. That's how much meat's left on uh, the old ones. That's a lot. That's a lot gone. So, I got this other side. And that's what I'm doing now. So, let me knock this out. Alright, so we finished the brake job on the Focus. Now the next thing is, before you go anywhere, don't just throw it and drive and drive off or reverse and drive off. You need to pump your brakes. You need to start the car, let it stay in park, pump the brakes until they feel firm. If you don't, they're not going to grab. I've experienced that. So, forewarn you, do not just throw it and drive and go. Uh, next, you got to do the proper brake in procedure, which should be like uh, getting up to 60 and then firmly pressing on the brakes to zero. Getting up to 60, firmly pressing the brakes. You want to bed them in good to the rotors but these rotors are already bedded in it's just I need to get these uh, pads warmed up and get the surface 
off of them and ready to go for braking, especially my wife, because she likes to have a heavy foot on the brake. But a little reliable focus. Uh, I wish it was a uh, RS, but it's not. It is a simple focus. So, yep. So, thank you for joining in to another episode of the shop. If these things help you, give me a like. Subscribe for more because there's always more because vehicles break all the time and information is needing to be given. Uh, the information I figure out is when I'm doing it. So don't let that be you because I make mistakes and it costs me money. <laughs> Help you out by watching the channel and watching uh, the different things about these. So uh, yeah. So if you want to know more about this, check out uh, the uh, end link with uh, all the videos for this wonderful, wonderful car. And if you like other things like uh, 80 Camaros, uh, 240s, Miatas, whatever else, that's also on the channel. So check out Teespring if you want some merch. Check out uh, Instagram for more information and what's up. Uh, we have a Patreon and a TikTok. So check those out. And until next time.